Hello, Ryan. Welcome to the new year. Good to see you again. It's great to be here. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone watching on a spec guide. I'm Max, by the way. We're in Ryan's car today because we're going to talk about, Ryan, the recent road trip experience you had in this. This is the rear-wheel drive Tesla Model 3. We're not just talking about this car, though, Ryan. I want to talk about road tripping with electric cars and why it's kind of harder to cross-shop cars and look at a single number to determine, oh, is this car going to be enjoyable for me in a road trip? Am I going to be waiting forever at chargers? How long will it take me? Well, we're going to tell you how you can actually figure that out in this video and why you can't just rely on on paper numbers. That's right. I had a really great experience in this Model 3 rear-wheel drive, which has the smallest battery, shortest range, slowest charging of any of the Tesla Model 3s that you can get, but it was still a very good experience. And I think it's a really great opportunity for us to talk about how road tripping isn't just dependent on having a big battery or having a lot of range or fast charging or good efficiency. It's important to have a combination of those in order to have a good road tripping vehicle. Yep. So if that's all Greek to you, or if you don't know what a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour is, let us break things down for you and help you understand through testing we've done and our own experiences with EVs in the real world, what makes uh, or one of the many ways to make an electric car a great road tripper. All right, so Ryan, we're still at the phase of like technology and economics and all these broader things with electric cars where having a big battery, let's just say, to throw in a car to get it really good range or fast charging speeds, those things are luxury features. And typically you're paying more for a vehicle that let's say has fast charging or has a really large battery. Certainly, I think almost every car in the market will give you at least 200 miles of real world range going at least 70 miles per hour on the highway. However, Getting a lot more than that, 300, 350, uh, 400 plus miles, that's certainly a a luxury feature that's reserved for some of the more expensive luxury EVs. Yeah, Lucid Air, or let's say like, you know, really impressive charging cars like the Porsche Taycan or the Hummer EV. Uh, Maybe those aren't, you know, designed for road trips, but they can charge really well because they have very large batteries and very, you know, sophisticated technology going on. But let's take the example of a big inefficient vehicle like a Hummer EV, Ryan, and talk about it versus your Model 3. This is one of our metrics here that we have to consider. Not in isolation, but just one of them, right? Efficiency. Your car, especially being a rear-wheel drive Model 3, goes a lot further for the same energy than, let's say, a Hummer would. That's right, and that's reflected in our efficiency as we can see in a, our 70 mile per hour range test. Uh, Model 3 is, of course, way, way, way more efficient than the Hummer EV. It's smaller, it only has one motor compared to three, weighs thousands and thousands of pounds less, a lot of factors that go into this, so it's a much more efficient vehicle. Yeah, and a less extreme example, but a really relevant one if you're cross-shopping the Tesla lineup is, let's say, uh, this car, right, versus the Model 3 Long Range. Neither of them getting the tax credit at the moment, but there is, you know, that price difference between them. Someone may look at the Model 3 Long Range, Ryan, and see, oh, it has a significantly higher EPA range number, uh, and it has all-wheel drive, which, you know, that may be an advantage to you. However, if you care about road tripping, it's really surprising how in the real world, this car how closely it stacks up to the long range, which has a substantially larger battery. Right. Despite the long range Model 3 having a bigger battery and higher peak charging speeds, the real world road tripping experience is actually pretty comparable between the long range and the rear wheel drive Model 3s. So if you're able to plug in for just five or just 10 minutes in a a Model 3 rear wheel drive or a Model 3 long range, the amount of actual miles that you'll be able to drive after that is actually a lot closer than you might first imagine. Yeah, so let's say in your road trip uh, that you took, you know, let's say there was an imaginary Model 3 long range following you, okay, they may have come out a few minutes ahead, but you you weren't spending that much longer actually or chargers than them because you didn't need as much energy to go as far. That's right, and another important factor with road trips is that not every single charger can give you your full peak charging speeds. Sometimes the charger is only going to give you uh, maybe 50, 60, 100 kilowatts, uh, and that's where efficiency really becomes very important. So if we take a very extreme example and say the Hummer EV, one of the least efficient vehicles on the market, and compare it to this Model 3 rear-wheel drive, Uh, And let's say we have to plug in into one of those charge point 60 kilowatt chargers. In this Model 3 rear wheel drive, we'd be able to plug in, charge up, and then get on our way a lot faster than in the uh, Hummer EV because we're able to go a a lot further on the same amount of energy. Just 
a much better efficiency. Yep, and it doesn't even have to be extreme. In Tesla world, right, let's say there's still a lot of these what are called version two Tesla superchargers. Uh, the modern standard are now version three, and as we're seeing the version four that are rolling out. But the older version two superchargers, Ryan, they are just slower. They're, I think, 150 kilowatt charging speed, which this car can effectively right, max out. So every car is getting the same amount of energy. The faster charging cars aren't realizing their full potential on those chargers, and there's still a lot of those in the real world. So you're going further. That's right. So on a version two uh, charger, technically speaking, the Model 3 rear-wheel drive will have the best charging experience. Uh, even though a Model X Plaid has a much bigger battery and better peak charging speeds, we're not able to take advantage of that on a level or version two supercharger. Uh, so you're stuck being there longer because it's a less efficient vehicle. Yep, and let's say you're on a big road trip like you are, a thousand plus miles, you are stopping overnight and you're going up to a hotel. Many hotels now have electric car chargers, which is really cool. And this is another really big advantage of having a vehicle that's very, very efficient. Uh, and in this car, we've got a 60 kilowatt hour battery, and that's the Model 3 rear wheel drive. A lot of hotels may only have a six kilowatt charger. And fortunately with this car, that means it'll take about 10 hours for it to go from completely dead to completely full, which means in pretty much every scenario, you're gonna be able to plug in your car, go to bed, sleep overnight, and wake up with a completely full battery, which is a really nice luxury to have. Yep, and you can't get that, let's say, in a Model 3 long range if you came in really low, because that's what, like an 82 kilowatt hour battery. And so unless you were really sleeping in, you might not actually have a full charge. And that's not, maybe not the end of the world, but just a nice kind of way this car with its smaller battery gets around, um, you know, slower chargers. It just goes further with the same amount of energy. You have to like emphasize that point, right? It's the interaction of like how much energy you have in the battery, how efficient that car is in the road, how quickly it charges. You got to consider all of these things together. Right. It's not just one factor that's important for road trips. It's a combination of a lot of them. Yep. And you know, like, you know, you were saying there's many ways to skin this cat. Uh, we can look at a vehicle like the Kia EV9, which uh, Kyle recently tested on the Out of Spec Reviews channel. He did a highway range test and he did another test that I think we really want to emphasize you look at if you're uh, cross shopping cars. He looked at it and found that, okay, it's not the most efficient vehicle. It's a big SUV, but it charges really quickly. So if you go to the right high speed chargers, it can be a fine road tripper because it charges so well. Right, and this is again highlighting that point that it's not just good range, it's not just good efficiency or good charging. You have to have some sort of combination. And this brings us to a really good point, which is our 10% challenge, which is a test that we've made here at Out of Spec. It's essentially a road trip simulation where you pull into a charger at 10% state of charge, plug in for 15 minutes, and see how far you can go at 80 miles an hour. And interestingly enough, the Model 3 rear-wheel drive performed very similarly when compared to the Kia EV9 in the 10% challenge. Even though this Model 3 had significantly worse charging, it had much better efficiency. On the other hand, the EV9 was much less efficient, but had much better charging. In the end though, those combined and ended up with a very similar result, and those are pretty comparable in their capabilities as a road tripping vehicle. Yeah, so people, you know, can look at those tests for vehicles they're interested in. I think the 10% challenge videos are really interesting. There's also numbers we put up on the site of the results of that. Don't just look at the EPA range and think that's a good road tripper, or look at, a, let's say, a poor range and think that'll be bad. Look at the whole picture. Consider how that car is actually gonna perform with how efficient it is, how well it charges, uh, and even the availability of fast chargers on your route, because we're still not at a situation where those fast, let's say, 350 kilowatt chargers are universal yet. That's right, and uh, again, like you said, it's important to look at all the factors, not just one, to determine what car is best for your situation and whether it's gonna be good for your road tripping scenarios. Yeah, so let us know if you have a car that you think is a Goldilocks car because it's really efficient and maybe has a large battery or something, or uh, if you have an experience with a car that doesn't perform very well with a large battery for road trips. Um, we're curious to hear about it and wanna hear your questions here on App Spec Guide. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Ryan, you've joined me for this one. It's been great talking with you. I've been Max, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.